What's going on guys? It's uh, Charles with Samuel Creek. Today we're talking about our hash pump. This is the world's first purpose-built pump for processing trichomes. And as you can see, this thing is a beast. It's huge. It's about two feet tall. And uh, you might say, well, no, 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 no. It can't. It's not the first hash pump. There's already other even diaphragm pumps that, that are marketed for pumping hash. Well, the reality is that those pumps are just relabeled. They are regular diaphragm pumps that you can buy off the shelf and they're being marketed as hash pumps. And the reality is they're just normal pumps, which you can get and they're great. They're fine. Absolutely. They, 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 they do work, but we did a lot of tweaking to this machine to be more gentle on trichomes and to process trichomes better. Because what happens is when you damage your trichomes, you don't really notice that you've damaged them. What you do notice is that your yields are lower. When you crush those trichomes, you might not find that empty trichome shell. You'll just see like some residue or some scum on your sieves if you're using uh, sieves. But it's really difficult to tell when something went wrong. You really see it as a loss in yield. And sometimes it's really difficult to determine where that loss came from. Was it just the cultivar that we're growing that doesn't wash very well, or the culprit may be your pump. One of the great features of this pump that makes it special is these little things right here. These are called flap valves. And so it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a flap. So it's a flap that goes up and down and it lets your trichomes go through. And so the way a diaphragm pump works is that there is two diaphragms and they oscillate left, right, left, right. There's actually a rod in the middle that oscillates back and forth. And so your water goes in through here and it comes up as this diaphragm moves back. When the diaphragm moves forward, the water goes through here and out. Every time it does that, a normal diaphragm pump has a cage, a ball, and a seat. So there is one here, one here on a normal pump, not this one, this is a flat valve, so it's very different. So what it is, is you have a little thing like this. And so every time the diaphragm oscillates, remember there's two diaphragms, a rod, and there's four of these. So the little balls go up and down and up and down and up and down. And this can happen thousands of times every minute. And so you have that potential of those trichomes getting crushed against the cage and against the seat. So that, that's one of the problems with this type of setup. Obviously this is a little different, it doesn't have that. So those are one of the features that we incorporated into this pump to avoid that kind of problem. The other cool thing about this pump is the plastic. This is made of polypropylene, food grade polypropylene. Usually polypropylene is reinforced with fiberglass, which is not food grade. So this typical type of pump would not be food grade because it's fiberglass reinforced. This is not. And so because it is food grade and it is, it is made of plastic, it's a thermal insulator. So the cold water with your hash flowing into this pump is gonna stay cold in there. So that's one of the cool things. It's made of plastic so the hash will not tend to stick to the plastic. So you're not gonna have that problem there. You can keep your hash in there nice and cold. It's not gonna stick. On a steel machine, you probably have to prime the pump with cold water to make sure the pump is cold before you actually pump trichomes through it. Um, and what tends to happen is over time, you may have that steel degrade or melt or damage those trichomes and it starts to create a coating of trichomes over that steel. The, the, the thicker that coating, more trichomes will tend to stick at it. And that at, at some point, what you end up making is rosin pressing, I guess, instead of actually pumping um, hash through it. So that's the other reason why this pump is so cool. It has triclamps, these flanges, you can connect your triclamps here. So you can connect your hoses. Most of us have nowadays triclamps in our lab, but you know, this is a hose adapter and you connect your hose here. Connect that, connect your clamp to it. These are two inch tri-clamps. Most people have one and a half inch. So these are a little bit bigger, but there's a reason for that. The other thing that makes this diaphragm pump so cool 
is how huge it is. So this thing has a 1200 cc displacement. So the way diaphragm pumps work is that to get fluid, you pump, right? The diaphragms oscillate. When you have a little baby pump, those diaphragms have to flap like a hummingbird. So think of this more like an eagle or something like that where they beat a lot less to do the same amount of work. So because this pump is so huge, these diaphragms have to work a lot less. The faster the diaphragms function, the pressure builds up more. And so, for example, you could have, these are bubble balls. Picture this being a trichome, just from the sheer pressure of the water, you can pop those trichomes. So you gotta be careful, right? You can't just use any type of pump and the bigger the pump, the better because the internal pressure, the pressure won't build up and you won't pop your trichomes. You can use this pump pretty much in any other system out there. And the reason we like pumps as a transfer instead of just draining onto your sieve, if you have a very large vessel, like a 50 gallon or even a 100 gallon system, the amount of pressure that's accumulated at the bottom of your tank on a 50 or a 100 gallon vessel is immense. And so what happens is these trichomes flow out and fall into that sieve, you create losses. Some of the more fragile trichomes can actually pop. They'll break and they'll make it through your sieve and you won't even know it. What happens is you start saying to yourself, man, why is my yield so low? Well, it could be your process. So you really do have to watch out about those kinds of things, but that's why we prefer a diaphragm pump to transfer fluid instead of just letting it pour out. Also, if you're pouring out, a diaphragm pump can actually help you transfer that fluid faster than if you are just gravity draining. I know it may not sound intuitive to you, but it is because this thing can pump at 100 gallons per minute. I mean, this thing is a beast. One of the cool things about this pump is it has sanitary flanges. So most of us in our labs have gone sanitary now. And so, you know, you connect your hose to this flange. You can use a hose adapter. So you can just have pretty much any, any hose you want, but you can just put a hose adapter to your sanitary flange and then your, your, your hose goes here. These are two inch. Most of us use one and a half inch, but the pump is just so huge. You know, if you're draining this or something else, it's really easy to, um, connect this and tie it into your system. So we really like how this whole system works. The other thing we like about this pump is the size of the solids that it can process. So this pump can process solids as big as 16 millimeters. So that's about the size of a dime. So think about that. You could have a rock the size of a dime, make it through this pump. It won't damage the pump. It won't hurt anything. So that's really uh, cool to have, especially think about it if a twig made it through or some bud problem, just straight up pumping, um, you know, within a given viscosity, any kind of flour that made it through the system, you're not going to worry about something breaking or clogging up. And that being said, these things are extremely easy to operate and they're extremely easy to service. The diaphragms and the gaskets, they have a service life. So many millions of cycles, you will want to do some preventive maintenance to these diaphragms, but you take these bolts off, remove everything, swap out the diaphragms, put them back in, put the bolts back on. It's not rocket science. A pump this size, maybe it takes you, maybe it takes you an hour or something like that. So that's really cool. And then also these pumps, you can submerge them. This pump can actually be underwater, no problem. You know, it's not like an electrical pump where you have to worry about, oh, don't splash it because it's not IP65 or 66 rated. You know, it's gonna burn up on me. No, no, no. This thing, you can have the whole pump submerged, throw as much water on it as you want. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It's connected by air. You connect your, your air connection right here with a little valve and you can throttle it and take it as slow or as fast as you want with a little ball valve. So it's really easy to operate and you can throttle it right on the spot. Technical specifications, this is two inch sanitary tri-clamp flanges. The air inlet is half inch British standard pipe. The maximum flow rate of the pump is 100 GPM, made out of food grade polypropylene. 
It is certifications, it is FDA, CE, uh, Atex 2. The maximum air that you can stick in this thing is 116 PSI. The maximum dry suction is 16 feet, which means that this pump could be 16 feet up in the air and you could actually suck something 16 feet up if it actually had water in those pipes the maximum wet suction would actually be 32 feet. And the maximum solids you can pump is 16 millimeters, which is about the size of a dime. I hope you liked our video. Thanks for watching. And uh, please leave your questions below, reach out on Instagram or check out our website if you have any questions. I know you're gonna love this pump as much as we do. We think it is innovative and it is awesome. Thanks for watching. Um, but that's... Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna sit straight. You know what I did? Como jorobada. Do I look straight? Pánico este. <laughs> Hi, my name is Monica. I'm with Tumble Creek, and this is our hash pump 400. I move my head. What's going on? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Hi, my name is Monica. I'm with Sambo Creek Filtration, and this is our Hash Pump 400. I think I wiggle my head again. What's going on, guys? My name's Charles from Sambo Creek. Today, I got shit everywhere. Fucking got bubba all over my fucking pump.